Hi, I'm Taps from W Consulting, and I'm going to present to you a short video presentation on IFRS 13 Fair Value Measurement. A little bit of background around IFRS 13. Firstly, the ISB decided to issue the standard for a number of reasons, and we can enumerate those as follows. The feeling was the guidance relating to fair value uh, measurement was dispersed across a number of different standards. So you had fair value measurement guidance in standards like IS 40, uh, in standards like IS 16, and so forth. And it was felt that to create a coherent and cohesive fair value standard would provide more value for accountants. Also, because the guidance was sitting in so many different places, there was also the potential for inconsistencies and potential conflict between the guidance that was provided. So by creating a single standard, you create a single internally consistent uh, guidance on fair value measurement. And then finally, in terms of the broader picture, it was also an opportunity to create convergence with fair value guidance that's provided under US GAAP. So those are some of the key reasons behind why IFRS 13 was issued in the first instance. So let's look at the scope of the standard. When do you use it? When do you not use it? Firstly, the standard itself doesn't tell you when to apply fair value. Instead, you need to go to the underlying standard. So for example, if you're developing an accounting policy for investment properties, IS40 would give you a policy choice between cost or fair value. Once you've elected or selected fair value, then you would go to IFRS 13, and IFRS 13 would give you the detailed guidance on how to apply fair value. However, it does exclude certain types of transactions from its scope. So for example, share-based payments, leases, and inventory are examples of items that are excluded from the scope of the guidance that is provided within IFRS 13. An important thing to note is just the complete definition of fair value that is now being provided. And essentially, the standard defines fair value as follows. It says fair value is the price that will be received to sell an asset or pay to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. Close quotations. The price is essentially therefore an exit price. So whether it's an asset or a liability, you're always looking at the price that you would exit that asset or liability, be it a sale or be it a transfer. It is not adjusted for transaction costs, but it's important to note that the definition of transaction costs does not include transport costs which are seen as being exclusive of that. And therefore, you would include transport costs in your evaluation of fair value. There's also additional guidance, apart from the traditional guidance around fair value, which is given for financial assets. There's now additional guidance given for non-financial assets. And one of the interesting topics that it raises is the concept of highest and best use. So for example, if you had an asset, let's call it a piece of land, which you were accounting for as investment property, in order to determine its fair value, you have to consider what is its highest and best use. And there are essentially three areas that you need to look at in order to arrive at that. Firstly, what is physically possible with that item? Secondly, what is legally permissible? And then finally, what is financially feasible? So in the one instance, if that piece of land could be used for residential property or could be used for farming purposes, you would select the one that would give you the highest and best use, even if the intention of the entity is to have it used for another purpose apart from its highest and best use. So that's an example of some of the detail that the standard gives you. In terms of fair value of liabilities, because traditionally you tend to have liabilities being measured at amortized cost, but there are instances within IFRS where you have the option to measure liabilities at fair value. And essentially what the standard says is that you should look at the measurement of the liability from the perspective of a market participant who would purchase it as an asset. So what would you look at? Things like the quoted price, for example, if there is a quoted price for that type of liability, or you use a valuation technique to estimate what that fair value would be. Those valuation techniques are broadly broken down between the income approach. An example of that would be a present value type calculation or a market approach where you'd essentially look to a similar asset in the marketplace and derive the fair value from a quoted price or from an indicator in a quoted price. Some of the other features that are in that standard which are borrowing very heavily on IFRS 7, which is a standard on disclosure of financial instruments, includes the levels at which fair value is determined. So for example, a level one fair value would be an unadjusted quoted price. 
and a level two input would be a fair valuation determined on observable inputs. And then finally, a level three va fair valuation would be based primarily on unobservable inputs. So in other words, it would be management's best estimate of what that would be in terms of fair value. Finally, in terms of effective data in transition, the effective date is the 1st of January 2013. The application of it is prospective, and it does give relief in the first year of application from providing comparative disclosures. In terms of our own final comments with respect to this, even if you don't formally adopt the standard, you should seriously consider looking at some of the guidance that is in there and seeing how you can incorporate some of the guidance that is included before you even get to the transition date. Enjoy using IFRS 13.